Welcome again with me in the Port Logistic Webinar Series. Today I'm going to explain about the foundation in order for you to understand the Indonesian Port Logistic in which I define by myself as the 3P terminology of Port Logistic. Before I explain, maybe many of you don't know about me, my name is Rudy Sangian. I've been 20 years as a practitioner in the Indonesian port and custom environment. I understand the detailed business process of Indonesian port and customs that require for consistently produces strong analysis in revitalizing the management of port to decrease the cost of port logistics such as demorage costs, detention costs, which have been burdened for quite long to the entire logistics company in Indonesia. To align my study experience towards the international benchmark, I conducted studies to the entire 29 Indonesian ports location with Cransom Logic Singapore when I was in Batam, with Soget Le Havre from France, and the last Valencia Port Foundation from Spain. In this outline presentation, the knowledge you will obtain from this presentation is you will know which government institution that involved in the chain of port logistics, who can be an Indonesian port operator. And the last of my slide, I give you the coordination case study between port regulator, port operator, and port community. Okay, uh, in this slide, let's see uh, what are the contents of the 3P terminology. Number one is a port regulator. Number two is a port operator. Number three is a port community. And the next slide you will see uh, what is the P number one port regulator. The port regulator comprises of a port authority. Harbor Master, Customs, Quarantine, Port Health, Immigration. So, I want to emphasize here once again that the port is not only Customs. There are many government agencies beside customs. I will give you one slide and I will not explain in detail. But in this slide you will see that the custom role, the custom role only supervision the goods in the port. This slide also explains which one is a port clearance and which one is customs clearance. In the port clearance, the vessel cannot enter the Indonesian territory, water territory, I mean, or leave the port prior to the approval from the harbor master and port authority. 
you will see also about the navigation directorate, the traffic, the sea worthy and safetyness. Those are the part of a uh, port clearance. The legal standing of the vessel flag is the same as the legal status of a country based on the vessel flags. And so therefore, the harbour master under the Ministry of Transportation will work meticulously or accurately based on the rule of the law. So the next is uh, P number two, which is port operator. In Indonesia, we have the state-owned enterprise port operator, the government port, and the private port operator. Let's go back to the previous slide that the MOT also manages the non-commercial port around 1,845 ports. They categorize as a non-commercial port. Even though it is not commercial, but there is a port service charge, so-called non-tax state collection, or in Indonesia we call it pendapatan negara bukan pajak. The last of this uh, 3P terminology I define as a port community. Okay, the port community comprise of uh, shipping lines, shipping agent, ship cargo expedition, stiff door company, freight forwarder, Custom Broker, in Indonesia we call it PPJK, Perusahaan Perantara Jasa Kepabianan, Truck Company, Exporter, Importer, Bubble Warehouse Operator, and the last is uh, Original Cargo Owner. The 3P Terminology. So the 3P Terminology comprise of Port Regulator, Port Operator, Port Community, which I have already explained to you. And in Indonesia, the state-owned enterprise, we call uh, Pelindo 1, 2, 3, and 4. And as I mentioned to you before, the Minister of Transportation also managed as a port operator for the non-commercial port. We call it the uh, Unit Pelaksana Teknis Pelabuhan. And the rest of this is a private port, which is a uh, Terminal untuk kepentingan sendiri is a private port and terminal khusus is a specific port. This slide will briefly explain the case study of the coordination as I have explained in my previous slides as a 3P terminology. In this slide you will see the role of port regulator as P number 1 terminology in this case is harbour master. Every vessel prior to arrive or enter to the Indonesian water territory will need an approval from the harbour master. And the vessel will be located in the anchorage area afterwards. To move the vessel from the anchorage area requires a lot of preparation. And therefore the role of harbour master is to check every vessel document that's submitted by the local shipping agent prior to given approval. My next port logistics webinar series will explain in detail about the vessel berthing, discharge and so on. In the next slide, you will see the, the port authorities role in coordinating with the local port operator and the local port community. In this case is shipping agent and the stevedore company if the vessel will be berthed in the non-container terminal. For the container terminal, there is no stevedore company, because the terminal container management become the stevedore company itself. I will explain this in detail in my next video port logistics webinar. So, let's summarize in this slide that the general function of the port authority, the harbour master, and the port authority coordination with state-owned enterprise port operator.
the shipping agent and the stevedore company. And we will end it up to the conclusion as follows. The port is not just a piece of land which located in the coastal line, but it involves a lot of parties in the port logistics chain. Why port-centric or why customs-centric as it has been explained that the port is not only customs agency as a port regulator, but there are many other government agencies that involved. Meaning that the LP logistics performance index must also measure the operational performance of many parties and not just customs clearance performance, but also the port clearance performance.